David Chancellor, a photographer working um, on the African continent, I guess, um, based between London and Cape Town. Yeah, we're showing um, hunters here. There's also other other sections from within hunters. There's some images from Safari Club and there's some images from some work um, in the northern um, highlands of Scotland. But it's basically um, work continuing to look at man's commodification of wildlife, how we put a price on, on wildlife to, in this case, to kill it, but how generally man puts a price on it. A previous work was in Kenya where there's no hunting and that work was looking at how we commodify it to keep it alive. Um, poaching is illegal hunting, so it's, it's completely the opposite. Um, this is hunters who, generally tourist trophy hunting, is hunters who pay to go and um, hunt animals because they want to keep them as a trophy. So I, although with other work I have looked at illegal hunting, everything that you're showing here is illegal. So it's organized, it's paid for, there's a specific price, there's a specific party who goes out. It's very, very different. The work is not um, singing the praises of one side or the other. Um, when I first started looking at the work, the reason I did it is because when I would meet conservationists and hunters who I was working with both sides, the hunters was all, would always say that hunting is an important part of conservation. And conservationists would always say that that was not the case and hunting was no help to conservation. So this work and all my work really looks at our relationship with the wildlife and how can you possibly, you know, my starting point was how can you possibly say that killing an animal is actually going to help with conservation. So, and what you're asking of those communities who used to generate income in Zimbabwe from organized and managed legal lion hunts, where they would take out a lion from the population that could actually be taken out from the population without having a detrimental effect to the remaining population, is that you're asking those, those villages to live alongside those lions, and in many cases, lose their children, have their children predated by those lions, and gain no income from it. And while we're sitting back in the US or wherever we happen to be and saying, look, you know, we need to make a decision on that, you're saying, okay, well, the income that you used to make from those populations, now you can't make. And also you can live alongside them and look after them for us until we've decided what we're going to do. And if they eat your children, well, that's, that's bad luck. So, you know, what I'm trying to look at with this work and, and continuing to look at is that how our... Uh, our response to something like hunting can have a huge effect on populations and African populations in this case. And it's an effect that we, it largely goes untold.